everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. Today we're going to be painting another hero from a Zombie Side Green Horde by Simon Games. This is the Great Zanzibar. No idea who that's supposed to be, but he does look like a good old fashioned lover boy. So let's give this guy a lick of paint. We'll start off with priming him in Army Painter's Matte White. It's just a plain matte, uh, matte white spray, so any brand will do, but I, I use the Army Painter's sprays. And then we're going to move on to Survivor Skin. We're going to be as normal, sort of painting the inner parts of the model first and moving outward so the skin's like one of the harder places to reach at the beginning so we'll get his face done first and his chest and then both of his hands are also he's not wearing gloves so both of his hands will need a little bit of this so i'm going to be using this rosemary co three slash zero brush for basically all of this model and it's a detail brush and it's perfect for that i'm also using that everlasting wet palette for this so i'm giving this a nice test here and what i found i just noticed straight away is that survivor skin absorbed enough of the water that i didn't water that paint down at all the wet palette did it all for me and it did it sort of perfectly two coats and that was exactly how i wanted the, the paint to flow abomination gauze next and we're going to start painting his sort of jester uniform that patchwork would you say those yeah maybe uh, i'm just painting rows and rows of these red diamonds up and down his um his his top i guess i'd call it it looks like quite a difficult model to paint and you might be wondering why i picked this one well some of you might be used to by now but every month stephen from patreon gets to request a model and he does choose some tricky difficult models to paint and this is his choice this month maybe in video future videos i'll stop mentioning that and you guys should just guess which model each month is his choice which one's the more difficult one which one's the tricky one anyway i'm going to do the best i can here and i really hope i don't crumble under pressure and as well as those diamond sort of parts on his top he's also got is the majority of that sort of top sleeves that puffy bit around the top is in the same abomination red and also the collar around this garment is is red on both sides I think this colour is without a doubt the sort of most amount of one colour you're going to have to put on the on the model. Uh, also, probably the sort of trickiest, there's quite a few lines around his chest, sort of around the very rim where it's got his, the opening for his chest. That's That needs a very, very careful line drawing around it. And then the edges of these red sleeves as well. And then, I mean, just those diamonds as well. They're just It's going to be a little bit time consuming, but just keep the paint fairly watered down again i'm just using the wet palettes i, I leave, i'm leaving it for a minute or so to sort of settle and absorb some of that water and then this paint's flowing quite nicely um i'm having to use two coats on some of the places but on the, the diamonds i'm not bothering because i'm going to be doing them again later anyway for the blue parts of the model we're going to be using ultramarine blue that's by vallejo and i thought it was a nice sort of color match to the blue in the artwork I'm still sticking with this Rosemary & Co. 3 slash 0. So I think I do the whole model with just this one brush. It's, it's fine enough to do the detail work and it's large enough to do. There aren't many big sections, but this is a large section. So this sort of the dangle bit of his loincloth, I guess you could call it. Um, that's a little bit tricky to get. Uh, just make sure you paint both sides. That's going to come out nicely. And then uh, of, of his pants or his trousers, if you're in the UK like myself, you, I'm going to be painting the other diamond sections using this color. I think it matches the artwork. So his top half, are alternate red and white diamonds, and his pants are alternate red and this blue diamonds. And that's the blue I used. Let me know in the comments below if there's any better suggestions for the blue. But I thought that was a great, great blue. I didn't have one in the Army Painter. Who somebody can let us know what the Army Painter equipped equivalent would be because some people might need to use that next we're going to be using claymore blade that's the light silver by army painter and we're going to be painting his staff he looks like he's got some sort of silver staff it's a bit weird maybe i've just missed seen the artwork but it looks silver to me so i'm painting that in just nice silver being a little bit careful around that sort of orb at the top which i want to leave in white next color is cock this is a very very light brown by vallejo I'm going to be painting on his belt and he's got a couple of satchels, satchel, satchel, pouches. Pouches is probably the best way to describe them. Doing those in the same colour. If you've got the army painter, probably like the goblin skin colour, that sort of light deserty yellow will do perfectly there. Then I'm just going back to Claymore Blade because he's got a belt buckle there. He's got a little bit of armour on his leg. He's got a chain hanging. Well, he's not a chain, sorry. He's got a, he's got a khaki sort of leather 
belt chain thing dangling down and it's got some claymore blade some silver on it so i was just coming back to detail that back in afterwards then bright gold's going to be used for he's got several medallions several necklaces around his his neck and that's probably the best place to keep them and then he's got gold at the end of both of his white sleeves and he's got a load of rings on and the the bit just below that white orb on his staff is also in a bright gold then we're going to use dead black to paint in his hair and his mustache squid pink i'm going to water this down a huge amount i basically turn this into a wash it's probably 90 percent water 10 percent squid pink and i'm just going to blend that from the bottom of the orb up it looks a little bit pink in the artwork i'm just going to give that a little lift of color after that we're going to use survivor shader and i don't do this very often but i'm just going to use one shader over the entire model and that's just going to make him a little bit cartoony uh, but just i think it's going to make the that sort of patchwork those diamonds just look really really good and stand out really really well and it's going to blend this model together really nicely now obviously do do as you please if you want to use different washes a red wash on the red bits blue on the blue that sort of thing by all means do but i'm just showing you how to do this quite quickly and i think you're going to be at least semi pleasantly happy with the results when you see at the end i think uh, i think it comes it comes it comes together nicely i like it when a plan comes together and that is the base coat completely finished and the washing, the shading completely done. So we're just onto the highlight and I thought, don't stop me now. Let's get straight onto it and get on with the highlighting. I'm going to use Vallejo's white primer. Now, Army Painters matte white will do. Any white will do nicely here. And I'm going to be highlighting up the white parts of the model. That's all those white diamonds on his top garment. He's got white sleeves. So I'm painting all of the sticky out, pokey out folds. Just, just... I'm going for really, really high contrast. I washed it all in black, so they're going to be popping out hugely. So I'm giving them a nice bright highlight down each of the folds, and it's going to look really good on the table at a distance. Survivor Skin's next, going to be painting the highlights into his skin. So that's all of his fingers, his fingertips on his face. You're talking about his cheekbone, his chin. I also painted his lips, leaving the shade around his lips, making them pop out a little bit better. And then I'm mixing Survivor Skin with matte white. I'm just whichever white's nearest at the time i'm really not finding any difference between any of the whites and this is just to give a second highlight to that skin so his knuckles his the tip of his nose this, the edges of his cheekbones that sort of thing there with the red we're going to just use a abomination gore again and paint back in that base color similar to as well the same as i just did with the white i'm going to go along all those diamonds and just paint back in the sort of center they do all stick out and they are all detailed, so it's not as difficult as it could be. You know, this isn't freehand painting. The detail is actually in the model, so you are just painting that back in. I'm also going to paint the edge of his collar. I'm going to do those puffy sleeves, brighten those up as well. And then I'm going to catch any of the folds and raised bits and edges of his shoes as well. So just going around the, the rim of his soles and then the top of where it joins his sort of ankle those bits as well i am going to be leaving those frilly parts that are dangling down we'll get to those later and show you what i'm going to do with that but we'll be basically blending them wet blending them never done that before so hold on to your hats we'll be there soon I, oh i am using a different brush for this part i am using my insane detail brush i haven't got a rosemary co brush that's as small as this now i do think the points on them are probably nearly as good but i guess with the camera in the way i just can't hold the brush as accurately as I would like. So by using an even smaller brush, I've just there's less paint on it, there's less that can go wrong. After after we finally get to the end of highlighting up those edges in red, I'm gonna use Vallejo's Hot Orange, which is a very red orange, and just do a final highlight around the very, very edges of all of those places. I'm not gonna put any on any of those diamond bits. This is for the edge of his collar, the edges of those puffy bits, and a little bit on his shoes as well, just along the creases and edges. Then we're going to use ultramarine blue, same as we did in the base coat, and just go over the edges. So that loin clothy bit, I, I wish there was, I knew the name for that. I'm sure there must be something, but that dangly bit between his legs, just highlight up the edges quite generously of all of the folds in, in that. And that's really going to bring that and make that look much, much more realistic, much like it's trying to break free from the model and just uh, enter reality and that sort of thing. <laughs> Anyway, we're also then going to paint up all of those diamond bits on his 
on his pants. We're just highlighting them in the same way that we did the red and the white ones. Now, after that, you're going to see me do something I've never done before. And this is going to be some wet blending. So I'm taking some of that ultramarine blue and I'm going to be applying it to the edge of all of these frilly bits, these like jester, like dangly bits that are coming out of his, out of his waist. So I'm painting the tips of all of those, we'll call them spikes going forth just for this part of the video. So I'm painting those all nice ultramarine blue. Then I'm just gonna pause for a minute and <laughs> grab some red. Now this isn't heavily watered down, using only really using the, the wet palette, but I've maybe added a little splash of water on top of this now, just to keep these nice and wet while I'm working with this. It is a heat wave in the UK. I am painting in 27 degrees Celsius, sort of 83 Fahrenheit, something like that. So it's pretty hot and it's drying the paints well. You can see I've now gone to two brushes. One of them has the red on, and one has the ultramarine blue. So I'm painting the tip one edge ultramarine blue, and I'm painting the base of these spikes in the abomination gore, and then I'm gonna be moving them towards each other, mixing the two colors together as they meet. Hopefully this is pretty clear on the video as I'm moving through it. Slow this bit right down for you, because it's a new part. I've never done this on the channel. There's no video on it which shows you how to do this yet. You'll have to let me know in the comments below how this comes out and if you'd like a more detailed like sort of look into this but you can see i'm now blending the red back towards the blue and prior to that i was blending the blue towards the red and because they're both wet they're starting to mix in the middle and i'm just going back and forth between the two colors and i'm, I'm sort of mixing you can have on your palette you can have pre-mix these and you could have a, a blue a red and a sort of purple in the middle and you can be blending those towards each other in the palette and then applying those three colors but i've got them plenty wet enough that i'm just doing it on these spikes they're small enough things that i'm just mixing them together and blending it by look and feel and and by eye you can see now i've got both brushes in my hand <laughs> i'm going to be going back and forth between them until i've got the very tip blue the base completely red and between the two we're going to have a gradient of that blue moving to that red and they're, they're quite extreme colors from each other it's quite difficult two colors to to blend together they don't naturally want to be like blended together right they're, there's a i'd say purple's darker than them both so you sort of blend into a darker the darkest color in the middle so you've really you've really got to water these paints down to to give the red a blue look that's what you what i'm trying to do here give the red a blue look rather than making a purple like the two colors would naturally make but i'm going to show you my way through a few of these and you can see what i'm doing in the background with just switching between the brushes and moving the moving the paints red from the red base towards the blue blue from the blue from the tip towards the base and then just sort of picking a brush to blend them more smoothly and in the middle and then feather them towards the two um, extremes towards the red and the blue hopefully that's making some sense and that's my first time ever trying that and it was not difficult i highly recommend you give that a go especially on this model they're very small areas and you know worst case scenario is you've got it plenty wet enough just wipe it off and do it again but honestly it took, probably took me to do all this spikes most interesting part of the model in my opinion no more than 10 minutes i'd say it was and difficulty nowhere near as difficult as i thought it would be highly recommend you all give that a try when you get to this model highlighting up his staff just using claymore blade painting their sort of line down one edge of it as though the light's reflecting off of, off of just one side of it and highlighting up any of the raised parts of the sort of wrap, which could be in white, maybe it's supposed to be a cloth wrap, but I just left it in silver. Bright gold, just gonna re-highlight, just a splash on his rings, on his anklet, no, it's not his anklet, his bracelet. And he's also got those medallions, just making those look a little bit more realistic as the light's reflecting off the edges of those. Then with dead black, I'm gonna pe paint his eyebrows in now, which I, neglected to do at any point <laughs> oops and also give him a couple of pupils just dot him in a pair of pupils to make his face look a lot more realistic and lifelike and that's it guys the great zanzibar is completely finished another model bites the dust one hour 26 what <laughs> like I, it felt like it took me a lot longer at the time but then 
you know, I checked all the footage and how long had passed and it was only an hour and a half. Crazy. I guess it's only sort of three colors with a splash of some others and only one wash. That's always going to save you some time. Hope you enjoyed the model. Hope you enjoyed seeing some wet blending. And if you enjoyed it, let Stephen know. Thank him below for picking this model. See you all again next week. Thank you.